two of the DNC was thank you very much. Day two was one for the history books because it is very clear now Hillary Clinton is, in fact, the nominee for the Democrats. And Hillary's husband and former President Bill Clinton did what uh, most first ladies to be ha have to do for their husbands. He did it for his wife mm. yesterday, and he took the stage to reveal a little bit of their history together. Take a look. I have lived a long, full, blessed life. It really took off when I met and fell in love with that girl in the spring of 1971. For this time, Hillary is uniquely qualified to seize the opportunities and reduce the risk we face. And she is still the best darn change maker I have ever known. There were some critics. Rachel Maddow said that his repeated use of the word girl at the top wasn't the most feminist way to start things off. Yeah. Um, I didn't think he had to be feminist. I think he was talking about his life with his wife, his girl. And you got to be personal. Uh, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what the that's what the first ladies have to do. And say, oh. and my husband. <laughs> My man I was so it. good to me. Yeah. He's so I, nice. I think it really humanized her. I love that he called her his girl. I would love it if my husband said, my girl. I mean, it, it just shows that they've been married over 40 years. Mm. And I think it showed a deep friendship. I think it showed a deep commitment. And I think it showed a deep respect and admiration for her life's work. And, and that was it's, key. It's 2016. We're not girls. We're, we're men. As for well. him, that's his girl. <laughs> <laughs> Re recount history, you look at it through the lens of who you were at that time. It's sure. kind of like when you look yeah. at your grandma's house and it's much smaller than you remembered. Yeah. Like yeah. at that time, it was a girl and a boy. And that's, I, I, I don't think we should ask for personal and then make it PC. But he could have said asking it the first story, time you know? it was I met a girl, but yeah, then he kept but, saying but it. But it's his, that's his <laughs> girl. That's, yeah. It's his prerogative. But I I she learned. was a young woman at that time. She was in college. But he, and he didn't say I was a boy who met a girl. But it also probably seemed like so long ago. Like when you hear the history they had, when you look back, maybe at the time she was a woman to him, but and when you look back on I mean, it, my God, yeah. what does it matter? My God. But the thing I did learn is... <laughs> he, he didn't say my bitch. <laughs> it's his girl. You know? It's his girl. Yeah. I mean, it's like, come on, relax. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't think he humanized her in that moment. I think he humanized himself. I think that when I, when I started watching that, I realized, I remembered why I liked Bill Clinton, which is that he's a great politician in much the same way that Ronald Reagan was a great politician. He's the kind of guy that can get out there. And no matter what he does, you, you kind of like him. You mm -hmm. kind of want to sit and talk to him. But when he started the speech, I felt like I was listening to this great story about how Bill Clinton is great at picking up a girl, which we all know based on his history. <laughs> well, he, he was, got no. disgraced in the old well, law. He wasn't that, he wasn't oh, that so, great at picking her up because but, he had to ask her to marry him yeah, three times. I she played like, pretty hard to get, and I, I thought that was a credit to Hillary I as well. I feel like, though, what Rachel Maddow was trying to say, and you know, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but... You know, speak to her accomplishments. I don't care that you know, talking about yourself but and how you did. Yeah, but lead with that. Lead yeah, but you know what? You, if he had, if he had done that, people would say, "Well, why isn't it more human?" If he had it, yes. leap. It was all about Hillary last night. Bill, you did a nice job. You <laughs> talked about your wife. Now people know some of her accomplishments, which yeah. start way over there and are go still going. Well, it also We're pointed out that they had a love affair. That it was a love affair. Yes, and that. Yeah. That's nice. But beyond that, you know, you said speak to the accomplishments, yeah. and you're mentioning whether he comes out of the gates or does right. after. Mm -hmm. The thing I liked was the listing of the accomplishments. You talk all the time about do your research, do your research. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot about what he talked about, and as to, to play the critical eye to the Clintons, a lot of people see them as just politicians who are who are opportunists. And as mm -hmm. one now person. I'm seeing right. a, a, a girl that was only a girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was only a teenager at the time, you know, in yeah. college, that was so driven all the way along. I guess when I envision them, I see them in office, and I just see them as politicians doing this and doing that. Now I see someone that was driven at it. it at an injustice in different places, Arkansas, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And each time she was like, well, I'm gonna go fix that. That to me made me like her a little more because I hadn't seen well, that you know, part. You can say what like, you want about the Clintons, but the fact remains is that both of them have dedicated their lives to public service. Yes. That is what they have done. Yes. As opposed to their opponent who has dedicated
dedicated his life to making money. And, it's a big and, difference. And, and these pe are people that went to the Yale Law. A lot of money. But these they are people have a lot that went to Yale Law School. You know they could have like, done a lot of that? different things. They could have gone into private practice. They, they could have made a lot yeah. more money at the very beginning. And to your point, Sarah, think about it. She worked to get children's health care. Yeah. She worked for children's rights. Well, she worked for women's rights. That's what pissed everyone off initially with her, is that she had the audacity to work with her husband to try to get help. She had the, the well, noise. She was his partner. The yeah. noise to be talking about. You were just the first thing. You don't know anything about that. They had yeah. no idea who yes. they were dealing yeah. with. Yeah. She is an extraordinary woman. Go ahead. I know I, you want I, to speak about just to this. this business yes. about yes, yes, the yes. money. Put your I keep, down. I keep, Put your I keep down. hearing this mm -hmm. that they made a lot of money. Uh, you know, Which when is not a problem for me, by the way. I love that. And when Republicans <laughs> make a lot of money, everybody's like, yeah. I'm happy that they're rich. Donald Trump, one of the things people seem to love about him is that he's rich yep. and yet the Clintons are not allowed to make money no and, and when she gives speeches and these people want to pay her three hundred thousand dollars a pop what is she gonna say no no there's a reason <laughs> for that though because I, I reason? the reason is that then you have a, oftentimes those very same people on the left who make a lot of money condemning people who make a lot of money and saying if you get up to this tax bracket we're coming for your money no, 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 that's that's not, you that happens a lot that's that not happens not a lot. Also how they yeah. make their money though I think I think what I was hearing in your answer was yeah. that it, not on the backs of other people did they make their money, they did it in the name of those people. And there I think that's the, that's, also, also, that's the difference. Also, when they say that these people have made a lot of money and they go after them, as you say, mm -hmm. they want them to pay their fair share of taxes. Yeah. They, have, they have all sorts of well, ways of hiding the money. Yeah, but you know what, to those help people other are, people. And you can't condemn, I mean, look, Donald Trump, I'm not going to speak to his character, but he's a businessman. I mean, that is an accomplishment. That there are plenty very of people out there. His that character. is an accomplishment as well. <laughs> One thing I just want to say, though, I think for this, the, a lot of the discussion has been about whether or not Bill Clinton would be a good advocate for her, and I think the answer is yes. I think what I heard last night yes. well. was that, yes, he introed with himself. I didn't think that was the best decision, but he speaks to her accomplishments well in the same way that I think Michelle Obama was a great advocate for and President Obama. And Lauren Manning, the 9-11 survivor, remember her? She had burns yeah. all over yeah. her body. She said, this is a quote from her, which actually made me cry mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. She said, I I trusted her when my life was on the line and she came through. Not for the cameras, very crucial mm -hmm. point. Not because anyone was watching, but because that is who she is. She had my back. Mm -hmm. I think that that is more important than what he said. That people need to see that she's not this calculating witch everybody has, they've made her on the Rush Limbaugh show or whatever else you're listening to on Fox. Well, you know what, 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 what made me... <laughs> to your point, Joy, I thought, I thought what, what Manning had to say, what Lauren Manning had to say was, was really poignant, but what struck me was what the congressman had to say, which was after 9-11, oh, the firefighter's the, brother, the firefighter's yes. brother, after 9-11, rather than do what Hillary was doing, which was visiting people in hospitals, trying to get health care for people, Donald Trump cashed in on a $150,000 check to help small businesses. It was earmarked to help small businesses. Where was know. Donald Trump? The native New Yorker after September. He was at the 11. bank cashing the check. Checking, <laughs> cashing That's check. where he was. Well, I, I will <laughs> say that some me. people. Some people were very upset that that uh, Bill didn't go into the 90s. Oh yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know. Awesome. Uh, well, okay. So, uh, unless there's a lot to say about it, can we just say it wasn't his night? It wasn't his to discuss. He was there to discuss her. And why would you say? Why would you say? And you know. In the 90s, you know, when I had that affair with that woman, my wife <laughs> yeah. was fabulous. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not how you do it. Yeah, you know? Of course you don't do that. But what I thought was interesting, the people that are coming after him for saying that he didn't talk about those affairs. Listen, marriage is hard. Marriage is about compromise. Marriage is about forgiveness. They know and they supposed to be about family values yeah. oh, yeah, and right. marriages staying together, then shouldn't they think that this is a marriage that stuck it Why, out after nice. all of that? I can explain this to you. It's all good when it's them. Okay, now, <laughs> Donald Trump people, didn't stick well, it out. hold on, hold on. Oh. Yeah, he his, stuck it out, plenty. You know, he's, <laughs> he's had, <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> Bill and Hillary have been married for years. Mm -hmm. Democrats, Democratic women, Republican women, and Republican men have 
use this for years. Why is she still with me? I don't know if I can stay with Well, you know what? None of your business. They're still together. Where's your marriage? Take yeah. care of your business. Yeah. And if you can last as long as they have, God bless you. But otherwise, you don't hear it. You don't no. hear it from the likes of Newt Gingrich, who told his wife goodbye while she was uh, recuperating from cancer. You don't hear it yeah. from him. Yeah, yeah. But that's, are, not, but that's not the argument, though, that people are making. The, what argument, is the argument. The argument is, of course, Bill Clinton wouldn't come out and talk about this. It would be ridiculous for him to do that. Expecting? The argument is that. They view Hillary Clinton as an advocate, supposedly, for women's rights. She's come out and said, victims of sexual assault, you should be believed. Oh, yeah. You should be heard. The this. argument okay. is that when those women came out, she took them down in many respects. That's oh, the I'm giving oh, you the wait, 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 We'll come back, because we have to now clear this <laughs> up, too. Come on. Please, please. Coming up, the tennis superstar who said menopause tore her marriage apart. History's about to happen as the first woman ever accepts the nomination for president. And your front row convention view is right here. First Lady Michelle Obama took the stage, honey. We disagree on policy a lot, but this is what a first lady should do. And it was amazing. Oh, yeah. Politically speaking, things are heating up. Like nobody else. Forget about it. Watch this show. This week on The View on ABC. One of the things we just, just <laughs> we discovered in the midst of the conversation is that we had this exact conversation like two weeks ago. Yes, we <laughs> so did, we're not going to go back into it because we already we did it. We talked. We did. It, so we're not going to do. It. But I am going to point out that Sonny's mom is sitting right there, and she's wow. brought <laughs> her red hat ladies. Yeah. And the ladies of the red hat brought me a red hat. Oh. This is the only way I can wear because my head is humongous. <laughs> so it has to be, look at this. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, I love Bye. it. They really put an exclamation point on the history part being made virtually by shattering a glass ceiling last night, mm. which I thought was wonderful. It oh, just yeah. kind of knocked me out. But then, I guess Nancy Pelosi said that too much focus on the woman aspect is not a good selling point. It could turn people off. But I think it can't really get around it. She, she's a woman. It's the first time, and everybody's kind of like, yeah. But Nancy, Nancy's basically saying, you know, don't vote for someone just because she's a woman, that that minimizes her talent. I agree with well, that. Well, we've been you saying do? that for months. Yeah. See, well, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to vote for Sarah Palin. I've said this before, just because she's a woman. Right. You vote for Hillary because she's competent, and the other side is a threat to civilization. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> True, but I, you know, I... Wait a second. Am I too wishy-washy on this topic? Yeah. I agree. I feel that you could be clearer. <laughs> I agree that you shouldn't vote for someone just because they're a woman. But what about the fact that she's supremely competent and also a woman? Because it I helps. think that women need to vote in their self-interest. And the global scholarship shows time and time again that women in political office make it a priority to advance women. Mm -hmm. Women's rights, women's equality, opportunity for young girls. And so when you're voting, you want to vote for things that matter to you. Yes, but so why uh, but do the, you the, not? Well, because, the, you because what you, I'm sorry, because the, yeah. the problem you run into is the problem that folks had with Obama. He's not doing enough for black people. He's doing too much for black mm -hmm. people. And so once you make that the focus, mm -hmm. that's, it becomes, well, you should be doing this for us. What you should be doing if you're voting is voting for the person who can get the job done. That's well, yeah. really what, and, you know, and she happens to be a woman. Well, happens, and, and and to be a woman. Nancy Pelosi was saying when she was asked those things that in her own career, she felt that she didn't ever want anyone to pitch her as, oh, and she's also a woman. Yeah. And I think that's a great thing, actually. But she also wasn't a first. No, no. Right. She wasn't a first. No. And this is, this is, well, think, whether you like her or not, it's the first. But I think what she 
she's saying is don't, I think it, it's polarizing to come out of the gates and say, well, I'm a woman and I'm great. You don't need to say that because yeah. you're great yeah. and you're, it's, you're it's, accomplished. It's, it's, it's presumptive of you to even think that any woman would be voting for women's rights. That's not true. Well, that's but but, but if you look at the global scholarship, I mean, there was a study, 31 countries were looked at, and it, it, it's a statistic that the higher the proportion of women lawmakers, the greater the number of laws enacted to advance gender equality. I mean, those are just the pure facts. Yeah. Those are the statistics. And so I, I don't understand why that is the well, but they make it, it Because it makes it, it makes it an issue that you mm -hmm. don't need to make it. If she is able to become the president, she's everybody's president, not right. just the president of women. And the idea that she is the first is why we so we celebrate yeah. it now because it's like, listen, who who was it? it uh, Shirley Chisholm, yeah, Geraldine Ferraro, yeah, uh, and I can't think of the other woman. Three women in. In my lifetime, two women have run mm -hmm. for president. Mm -hmm. This is the first time, and I was thinking about it last night because my mother, had she lived, would have lived to see a man of color in office yeah. and then a woman, a, a woman. Yeah. If, if God, it's historic. Willing, it happens. It is historic. historic. So to say it, but not to not to <laughs> drive it. It's not the driving force yeah. behind us. I, th I think. I think there is a lot of pressure though, and, I, and you, I'm glad you brought up Sarah Palin yeah. because I remember when Sarah Palin was front and center. A lot of people on the right, a lot of women felt that they were obligated to support her because she was a woman. We tried and I to think tell many them. people on the left feel that way. <laughs> we tried to help them. No, they but didn't it's want like, to you know, just because somebody has ovaries doesn't mean yes. I'm gonna support you. And right. I think if I were Hillary Clinton, I would make my gender the least important part of my campaign. Uh, if well, she, she hasn't, hasn't she hasn't look, made, she, she hadn't done well, that. Well no, the Clinton campaign put ads out saying that, you know, young girls should vote for a woman because it's historic. And I've heard her make comments about they need to vote if I were shouting, interest. you know, sometimes people don't know how to handle a woman who shouts she throws that out there wait, I would say wait, to wait, her, wait, wait 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 you do remember what that came from right you do remember that was off of a nasty comment by Donald Trump yeah, the woman about truth. her shouting no oh, about her shouting. shouting that is true yeah, and then the woman I'm sorry shouts. go ahead that's baby. true but I made I made that point one night she was on the TV and I said why is she yelling at me and yeah. that wasn't I'm not yeah. anti-feminist or I don't hate women no. I have ovaries I'm just but saying she was yelling you, at me. that was <laughs> I'm saying to you yeah. you might have felt that way yeah. but he said it he yeah. made it about her being, mm -hmm. you know, under the in between the lines. It was about oh, a loud shouting woman. That right. was his comment. The way I feel about it, if she happens to get elected and in that process she shatters a ceiling, amen. Good for that. I would love to see that accomplishment. Good, are you I was, vote for? I'm not going to vote for her because I don't like what she stands for. But what I'm saying is, you shatter, don't like that she stands for like, childcare, no. women's rights, gender no. equality, deceit. You, you, you don't on top of deceit. You don't like her policy. You don't like her policy. I don't like the deceit. You like I policies. can't vote for a liar. I can't vote for a liar. I'm not going to vote for a liar. I told you yesterday I'm not about vote for that. Liar. Jedediah, I asked you yesterday if you've never voted for a liar. Unless you're 12 years old, you have. I know too there much. You go. <laughs> we'll be right back. So tennis legend Chris Everett says apparently more women need to start talking about menopause because she claims it got so bad it broke up one of her marriages. Oh. And she didn't get specific about how, but, you know, <laughs> I can see how it could happen. <laughs> I can't well, really. How do you think it happened? Well, it's hormonal, right? So I, I compared it to it's pregnancy and stuff. It's hormonal. It's just body function. It's, you know, sometimes it's age and your priorities change and you don't want to all the time. I would believe it. Sometimes I, you don't want to at all in the week. <laughs> I've seen a really ugly side of hormones, so I'm just going to uh -huh. extrapolate from my the own ugly experience. ugly side of hormones. Yes, yeah. Yeah. very like ugly side yes. through my pregnancy. <laughs> that I believe that some, I mean, I've gone to some dark places yeah. in that yeah. time, so I would believe this could break well, up a marriage. Well, it ruins, yeah. your, it ruins your sex life as well. It what can, it does. yeah. How, so how, does having a baby. How does it ruin, it ruins your, sex your sex life? How does it ruin well, your... You yeah. know nothing. About, okay. Well, I, I, you know, I, I'm not in menopause yet. I haven't thought about it. I mean, when I often think about it, I'm like, I've been getting my period since I was 11. When will it end? It's going but to I, end. And when it but, does, but when it's gonna it be does, But I guess I'm going to be upset <laughs> when it ends. So I, I don't understand. There are hot flashes involved, and sometimes if you're in bed with someone else, they also have heat, <laughs> and it's like. Get out of the bed. Really? Yeah. Or I'm getting up because you're, it's too much heat, or it's too cold in here, or I just don't know who you are, or if I like you. <laughs> well, well, Menopause 101 with 
We'll be I going know. Through. I told. I told my doctor. I said the sex is uh, difficult because it's too hot. I'm and hot. It's dry. So he says to me. He says to me, get on top. <laughs> really? So I said I'm really a little too tired for that. <laughs> How about if I just get a vibrator and a ceiling fan and call it a day? Very not. I mean, there but are you solutions, are, are, is yeah, my point. You are, there, is, there are solutions, but sometimes <laughs> there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Sometimes there's nothing you can really? do because, you know, we're all adults. You dry out in places that you've never had to dry out before. And it's like dried flowers. You know those dried flowers? <laughs> no, it's not a dried flower. You're dry. And yeah. it's very difficult. You know, the only thing I can relate to about this, which was interesting, there's is nothing I you can relate no, to. No, about this, I, you're I, not here. Here's the thing. I took, I, I react really oddly to hormones. I took birth control pills for a short period of time, dating a new guy. I went nuts. I was mm. a crazy, psychotic. You want to talk hot flashes? Are you still yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> She's all right. I went crazy. I went crazy. Listen, a, a man-made pill is not is nothing compared yeah. to what well, that's why you guys are you. scaring that's me why. now. Well, but, it's, but you have nothing to be afraid of. Listen, no, I'm, I am afraid. I'm afraid. Now. Don't be afraid. Why are you afraid? Nothing. What are you afraid well, no, of? Because horrible. things happen to your body that seem like a, a person out outside. Control. I feel like I was a puppet when I took those pills. I felt like someone was managing me from the outside, and you're telling me it's gonna get worse. I am yeah. those people. I know. <laughs> I know. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. I know. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Deal with it now so you are preparing your husband I for what know. may be coming. I have See, to find him this whole, well, you know, you can, no, you, or whoever you end up living with, cat, dog, doesn't matter to me, <laughs> anyone you want to. But the thing that you have to remember is that it is, you've been going through this all your life. Mm -hmm. It's what's happening to you. Your yeah. evolution is happening all the time. You're, you have hormonal changes going on. This is one that says, listen, now you've done, if you're lucky enough to have a child, you've done that. Your body says you're done. Yeah. Now, you don't have to worry about wearing white pants. <laughs> and that would be nice. I would like you that. You don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, I don't know where my, if I took my pill today. You don't have to worry about any of that. Okay. So yeah. you got good times ahead, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Now, now, you, right? you say I mean, you should. Would you, you say that, Joy? It's good times ahead. Well, there, it's got good, it's got its yeah. points. It's got its points. Yeah. It's got its points. But you know, right. as Betty Davis said, old age is not for sissies. Yeah. So just remember that. Can I ask Because as you get older, men, things happen to you. Do the men in your lives understand it? Because yeah. men can't and relate you have to this. Yeah. Well, you have to, it doesn't you, happen all at once, right? right? There's it, only one man. Does. Wait a second. There's only one man in my life. And I'll call him and wake him up and see how he feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't happen all at once. So, so it's a process, I'm assuming. So how long does it last? Forever. For some women, it lasts forever. <laughs> forever. My mom had it some for four or five it. years. I had it for two. Oh, wow. I've had it for so 15 a, years. It could be a, so you're kind of getting long the front process. end period. No, I'm done. I've been done for a long time, but I'm okay with it. Because yeah. the biggest it problem that you always will find is getting a guy to understand that it's not that you're rejecting him. It's your body yeah. is changing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that heat yeah. stuff is real. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't want somebody draped on you when you're uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. And trying to get somebody to understand that, you have to start early with this them. This is why when you have a baby, when you're in your late 40s, if, I don't know how they even hold a baby. Yeah. You want, the baby is hot. <laughs> Babies are hot. What are they getting? And what are they getting out of there? This baby just dried up. Well, that's, come on. I don't know about that. We'll be right back. I don't know. That, that's <laughs>Woken up from a sex dream and think, what the hell was that all about? <laughs> well, apparently a psychologist breaks it down in a new book called Love Spells. Uh -huh. Well, it's like if you, you dream about sex with a celebrity that uh, you are, what is it? <laughs>
It means you, it means you think you deserve more than you're getting in a relationship. Really? Yeah. But a lot of people you guys dream. Have them? A lot of people dream about Woody Allen. That's a fact. Uh, That's a fact. Is it? Yes. A lot of people really? dream about Woody Allen. I read that someplace. So I mean, uh, so what's that about? What was? Oh. I mean, it, it seems like you. If, if you have sex with a stranger, it represents masochistic behavior I and have an had indication a lot. that your sex life has become mundane and oh, automated. Wow. And, and get this: sex with an ex. This could imply unresolved issues. You may be missing the intimacy that you previously had with that partner, or it could mean that it's coming to terms with the end of that chapter in your life. Oh, I once had a sex dream about an ex years ago. Baby, if you're watching, it was a long time ago, but <laughs> it, it was um, a long time ago. And I'm one of those people when I have a dream and I wake up the next day, I live through the dream. So I basically had sex with him the entire next day, too, oh, in my no. mind. Lucky you. But it, made, it was <laughs> wasn't a bad no, thing. No, in your mind, she said. No, but I, it led so me to, I like, I thought it's about, do so I want to get back together? with him it was mm. it was it was a moment I take these dreams very seriously well, that's what the, that's what yeah it, it was that it's hasn't about. happened usually when I have a lot of sex dreams it's because I'm not having enough sex just to put it out that out you know? well I had once had <laughs> when I was pregnant I actually woke up and I was watching Narcos the show on Netflix oh. and oh. I ended up having a, a really good sex dream with Pablo Escobar really yeah wow. the drug dealer? well it was the actor who played the drug dealer oh. but it was really normally you know how like you get a sex dream and then it moves yeah. on and you're like no go back to that one like uh. I woke up and I was like sweetie I just had the best night ever with Pablo Escobar. <laughs> it was so weird. You and told it was him? so real. You I told, had to tell him. I felt him. like I had violated everyone when, in my life. You dream cheated on him. When I was dream cheated. I dream cheated. And I dream enjoyed cheated. it. And you're dream I when really I was, did. When I was pregnant with my son, um, I, I remember having this, this crazy dream. Because I used to watch Maury Povich all the time. I was no. On, I was on bed rest. Don't tell it's with Maury Povich. No, no. Because he is not No, no. And, and I had this dream where um, I, I, I was in the Maury Povich show, and I had the baby, and then uh, my husband came out, and um, they said, you are not the father. You're the father. You're the father. And it was this guy named Daquan. And I was like, I was like, oh, Daquan. I dated him. I don't know him. It was a whole crazy dream. You're going to get emails. I love that your, I love that your, I Maury, your Maury Povich dream went Oprah. You were like, and you're the father. Yeah, and and you're the father. father. It was like, crazy. Dad's but pregnancy runner. dreams are crazy. <laughs> she, she makes, makes shows. shows. <laughs> yeah. Pregnancy dreams are nuts. Your face through this whole segment is humble. <laughs> what, do you have sex dreams? I have sex, babe. Oh. oh. You win. You win. win. I, but I don't. Sex together. I don't. I have it. I have it. Yeah. Woo. And I have it with things that move. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it with people. <laughs> but I don't ever have it when I don't know I'm having it because it's somebody is not supposed to be in my dream. I don't. I don't do that. That's okay. not. Me. Some people say that dreams are just flat brain waves. It has nothing to do with anything. Really? Well, yeah. Yeah. You know. It's so what Freudian. happens if you're, if you're, you know, if you give birth to a dog, what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. In your dream. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, you have crazy, if you want to talk about crazy dreams, there are crazy dreams, you know, yeah. but if you start saying, well, that's what this means, you know, then you get to the, well, then, no, you know, so does fun, it mean though. I'm not having, it is fun. Is my it dog is mad at me because I didn't, you know, <laughs> breastfeed it? I don't know. <laughs> it's too bad. though, if you're in therapy, it's, if you're in therapy, it's a good jumping off point. Like I had a dream last night, I was having sex with a you know, you go from there. Like, do you have a dog? Uh, do you find the dog attractive? Are you dating a guy who's very furry? Right. You see what I mean? Yes. You keep going along yes. like that. And then you come to the conclusion that you're out of your mind. That's a lot. That's a lot. We'll be right back. Dentist is reportedly suing his at least four of his former patients for writing bad reviews about him on Yelp. Now, some people think that's a good thing. Some people think it's a bad thing. What do you think? I do use Yelp. I mean, yeah, if I'm going to go get a manicure at a new place or a pedicure at a new place or go to a new restaurant, I Yelp it right away because I almost feel like people that are reviewing it aren't getting paid to do reviews. I feel like it's transparent and it's sort of a consumer question? experience. So if you were getting heart surgery, I know you'd call your husband, yeah. but would you check Yelp first? No. For heart no. surgery? Okay, so no. Okay, so... Well, maybe. It's it's uh, it's a it's a it's, it's a dentist. Yeah, it's it's a, and so I wonder if that's if that puts it in a different light. Because I mean, 
I might yelp at dentists. You know? I yelp at the vet. That's how I found my vet for my babies. Yeah, but, yeah like, right. I know that's, yeah. Kids. I'm yeah, kind I know. of obsessed with yeah, my dogs. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's yeah. normally, I didn't know anyone where I lived. And so I looked it up and read a lot of those mm -hmm. and kind of pieced together an idea of where I wanted to take them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but you can make up stuff. Like, yeah. I know somebody who was uh, uh, in business in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So he calls up his friend and says, tell all your friends to write good reviews yeah. on Yelp about my restaurant. Yeah. So really? Yes. Yeah. They and then somebody could be annoyed with something like the fork did was was missing the time. Or something. Yeah. yeah. No, that doesn't happen. See, I always feel I, I don't you know. get mad and you and you trash the restaurant and then the restaurant goes out of business. I don't think that's fair. There's also crazy people out there that live to complain about everything. So I hate these. So if I if I want to know where if I'm thinking about a vacation or I'm thinking about I call people I know that I trust their judgment and I know they're not kooky. Yeah, but because if they some people been there. are just yeah. They yeah, they but I mean you don't know whose opinion you're reading or what they. Right. I mean I. And it's your it's, it's your just, mouth. Oh, it's the in your mouth. Well, That's a big deal. I, I will say this. What's interesting, um, I did a little bit of research, and um, he, this, this, this uh, dentist is suing them for defamation. So he's saying what they said wasn't true. But there is the right to Yelp bill, which is also known as the Consumer the right, to the right to Yelp bill, also known as the Consumer Review Fairness Act, which prohibits inclusion of like gag clauses in consumer form contracts yeah. because they think that companies are trying to silence their yes. customers. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? Like, well, but I'm if you but if that. you if you if you want to complain about somebody or something or the service that you got or that your teeth didn't come out the way that you thought they were supposed to come out and you didn't get any help. Shouldn't I mean, you be able to do that? You should be able to yeah. do that. Is yeah, like you a should. Better business bureau or something? Well, that? that's what these people yeah, used that's to do. What, now they just yeah, now they do it, it right up. there. Now yeah. you Yelp, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. easier to find on on Yelp. <laughs> I feel like you have to be able to to speak your mind. It's just a matter of how much trust you put into that site that you look at. So I mean, if I if I write a book and there's right. a whole bunch of negative reviews, I'm not going to sue people for defamation if they write a bad review. But at the same time. If you hate my book, you have a right to say, I hated you your book. A, you have a right. So. Those reviews carry a lot of weight, though. I do it on everything I buy. Like, a lot of times when you buy oh, something, if it's true to size or if it's yeah. weird and people are like, you Didn't know, they... you write your little reviews? No, I wish oh. I did. I should right. give back. I, I'm a taker. <laughs> <laughs> not a giver. So, but I read those a lot. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, think about it. Would you yelp a gynecologist? I might. Really? I might. Yeah. That I is just, freaking. Wow. I just, I, too I, I want, I want the I, I, feedback. I don't even know if I can even, I don't know I what to say to your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I want the feedback. I want the information. But you don't and know I, that I, you're getting, re you don't know if you're getting real feedback from real people. But it could yeah. be part of, of the of picture you're creating. I can no, create Have my you picture. not, have you not, okay, what I want you to do is I want you, there's been a, several articles on People reviewing things that have that reviews not even been real. Yeah, see that. It's a that huge. Concerns it's a, that. It's a, I didn't it's realize that. It's a huge that. deal. Yeah. And you yeah. have to be, I mean, you know, I wouldn't want you to, I like Yelp. I go if I want something to eat. And that I just, but to take care of your body? Yeah. No, baby, that's not the, you know, don't, don't you go to WebMD or something? You, who does WebMD? WebMD, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know. I diagnose so good. many things. Me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have my internet. I MD. have a doctor at this point. Same here. <laughs> Same here. I've, been, I've been near death many times with WebMD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I have it. And I'm on that note, we'll everything. be right back. <laughs> Tomorrow, we're spreading joy all over the Democratic National Convention. Behar's busting into the DNC, and she's taking you along for the ride. So just, we had a, a, a breaking news story that we just wanted to make you aware of. Uh, apparently, Donald Trump said, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Mr. Trump said directly, uh, staring into the cameras, I think you might, will probably be mightily rewarded by our press. That's being reported by the New York talking, Times. This, the New York Times is saying this. It's so, so he's inviting uh, a there's superpower all kinds of, Yeah, I was just about to say it. Comrade oh. Donald Trump. So, but not only is that, but... All right. <laughs> Go ahead. On, on a much lighter topic, um, <laughs> we'll be live on Facebook after the show. So join us, post your questions and comments, and we may read them. We're going to be talking about Mariah Carey and her entrance song and a lot of fun things, yes. what you'd walk and into. And I'm going to the Democratic yes, Convention right after the show, so we'll have some footage tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well... It's never dull. <laughs> we want you to have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy 
every view you come upon. Yeah.